Hey everyone, this is going to be part three of my 3D to AI tutorial series. I'm gonna go over how to create something like this using a text to 3D feature from Luma Labs. At the moment of this recording, the feature is free, but it's not unusual to have something like this suddenly become pay to use. So hopefully it's still free when you're watching this. Just a quick recap, in part one, I went over the basics on how to use Blender and how to import Mixamo models into Blender. In part two, I ran a 3D render into Comfy UI to create some very interesting visuals. I do recommend you check out part one if you have zero experience with Blender because we're gonna be using it today in this video. And just to let you know, there will be links to those videos in the description. All right, let's get started. All right, we're gonna start off on this lumalabs.ai page and we're gonna come up here to the top right where you see this little thing, some people call it the burger. Click on that and we're gonna go into Genie Text to 3D. Then this page is gonna open and this is where we're gonna put our prompt right down here. Uh, if you come here to creations, you're gonna see some of the stuff that you've generated in the past. So you can come back and revisit some stuff that you've already generated. Now let's go back to Imagine. I decided today I'm gonna use Naruto as an example. So I'm gonna put Naruto T-Pose and the reason you want Naruto in a T-pose is because we want to rig his body so we can animate him. What you want is to have his hands extended like this. You also don't want his legs together because if the vertices are overlapping, it's not going to make the animation look good. So if you're not getting what you want, you can always do retry or you can go back and change the prompt if you feel like the prompt can also help guide it better. I'm going to try uh, Naruto orange jumpsuit, blonde hair. This is better and it gave me something that's a little bit more closer to what I was looking for. I think I'm gonna go with this one right here. I know uh, it doesn't look very good. Yeah, the lack of details in the face, and then obviously the hands are not good, but we're gonna Frankenstein this thing and try to make it work. Also, he seems to be a little bit too tall. It just looks like he's shorter, but we can make some adjustments in Blender. Uh, we have a few options here. We have make high res. This takes about five to 10 minutes to render. However, it does give quite a bit more details, but sometimes it does change the way it looks. Like uh, at one time I generated like an image of Goku. When I did it high res, he looked really good. It added like some details that was really nice. But then for some reason in the back over here, it made it look like it was the front and it changed it for some reason. So it doesn't keep things exactly the same, unfortunately. I mean, you can try to see if it if it just improves it, but I think I'm just gonna leave it simple like this. Remember, we're not looking for perfection because we're gonna use Anime Diff later to make it look better. And you can read Apologize. Uh, I think that's how you say it. This will create a new typology, basically make the mesh look cleaner, which should help improve the way it animates. When you click on it, it gives you an option of low, medium, and high poly. I don't think you need to go high for what we're doing. I would keep it low or medium. In this case, I'm just gonna keep it medium. And then you have the format here. You have different formats you can save it as, but I'm gonna save it as a FBX file. Then we download it. It says it's cleaning the mesh, I'm guessing because of this option right here. While that's downloading, I am going to go back over here to imagine. And then I'm gonna put Naruto head. And this is really where we're gonna get a little bit more detail with the head because now it's not trying to generate a whole body, but just the head by itself. So it might do the head and a little bit of the shoulders. Oh no, it's just doing the head, so that's good. Again, you don't have to make it perfect as long as you have enough of there to identify him and to make it look like him. I think this is pretty good right here, actually. Or even this one looks pretty decent. I think this one might be good. I'm gonna do high res so that you just can see what it does to it. It's gonna take like a few minutes, so I'm just gonna skip to that part. All right, it's finally done. And I'm gonna show you the before and after. So this is the before, this is how it looks, and this is the after. I mean, it definitely gives it a lot more details that just makes it look better. This is not always the case. Sometimes it does do things that you don't want it to do. So, you know, you can try it if you like. Again, I'm going to keep the FBX format and I'm going to download this. Now let's do the hands. Let's type in open hand because we want the fingers to be spread apart. I think something like this actually works. It looks like it can be his hand too because it has like smaller fingers that look a little bit more chubby. Now that you have those models, we're going to go into Blender. I did go over some of the basics with Blender in part one, so I'm not going to go over how to navigate and move the camera. But if there is anything new that I didn't mention in the first one, I will definitely talk about it here. We're going to press Control S so that we can save this. It's going to call this Naruto save Blender file. Okay, we're going to remove this. And now we're going to bring in the models we just generated. Oh, before that, I actually have to unzip all these. So I'm going to go to extract. Now I can come to import FBX. And then we have the body. We're going to start with the body. 
and then we have the body right here. If we press one, we're gonna get the front view. As you can see, he's not facing forward, but we'll fix that in a bit. For now, let's just bring everything in actually. We're gonna import again, go back, let's do the hand. Let's move this hand somewhere over here to the side for now by pressing G. When you select something, you press G, you can move it around. Don't move the body, just try to leave it there for now. And lastly, we're gonna import the head. If you select an object and press G, and right after hold middle mouse click, you can move within the axis like this. It keeps it locked. So it gets kind of tricky sometimes when you're like at weird angles too. For example, like this angle, like sometimes you just gotta be a little bit careful. We're gonna push these aside for now. And then this, we want to press one again so we can see at the front view and then G, middle mouse click, and then I'm gonna go up like this. And I'm gonna make sure that the bottom of his feet is right on that red line. And then I wanna rotate this guy. So I'm gonna press R, then negative 90. I'm gonna type in negative 90. And then after that, I'm gonna press Z. And it's going to rotate him to the front like this. And if you come up here to the right, we can go to the material preview. So we could see the textures and everything. Let's actually move the head also the same way. We're gonna press R, negative 90. And then Z. Okay, it looks like he has really long legs. I am going to try to shrink him a little bit. You select the body and you can either press tab or just come up here and go into edit mode. I'm just gonna press tab. And it's gonna let you select vertices. And you probably don't have to do this part that I'm doing right now because your model might be the right height, but mine isn't. I just feel like his legs are just way too long. We wanna make sure that we press alt Z so that it's in x-ray mode. If it's not an x-ray mode and I select this, it doesn't select like the back of the model. So if we go to Alt Z and then we do this again, then it's gonna do the whole body. I'm gonna select the part that's right underneath this bandage thing here, like this. And then I'm gonna come up here to this proportional editing icon right here. You click on that and when you press G, you can move this around, but I'm gonna lock it into an axis by pressing Z and it's gonna lock it on Z. I can't move it around anywhere else. And then if you scroll up and down, it's gonna make this circle bigger or smaller. And that's how much influence it's gonna have on the other vertices that are nearby this selection. If you make it small, it's not gonna affect it a lot. You wanna make it a little bit bigger so that when you're moving this down, it's not going to like cut in like this. So let's make this bigger and then just come down like this. And yeah, you have some folds right there. You can always adjust those by coming up here to sculpt mode. And if you hold down shift and you left click, it's going to smooth out these vertices so that it looks a lot better here. There you go. It's not the perfect solution, but it gets the job done. I do feel like the hands are a little bit too long, but I need to cut these hands anyway. So we'll, we'll do that in a bit. Make sure we select the body, go back to edit mode, and we're going to remove the head and the hands. So I'm gonna come up here at the select box. Right now I have it in square, but if I can change it to circle and then I can change the, the radius too. So make it, you can make it bigger. And I'm just going to select the head. Yeah, it's gonna select everything. And then I'll press delete and delete vertices. All right, it's gonna leave a big old hole there, but it should be fine. Delete the hands. I'm gonna make them a little bit shorter. Delete. I know it's not perfect. I'm not like, being super careful with it either. Okay, so now we can bring in this head. I'm gonna move it, trying to center it as much as I could. You got this center line right here that can guide you. And then I'm gonna press S to scale it down. Bring it up, scale it again, just to make it look like it's the right size. Yeah, like that. Maybe I push it a little bit forward. And we can fix this little open gaps or, or we can just leave it as is. It looks like it fits the body pretty well. And then let's move the hands. I gotta rotate it. So I'm gonna press R to rotate. And then you press either X, uh, Y or Z to rotate it in a certain axis. So uh, in this case, I need the Y. So I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna scale it down, bring it close to the body, kind of position it where it's kind of has to be at right it also matters what perspective you're in like if you're like from here and you press rotate it's going to rotate it this way but if you do it from the side here and you press rotate it's going to rotate it like this so that really helps too if you can orient yourself in the right place to kind of make it work easier for you and i think this looks pretty good so to fix this let's actually keep the hand selected we're going to go into sculpt mode and then we're going to press g we're going to push up right here. Yeah, there you go. 
So what it's going to do, it's going to like move like the mesh around. So we don't, we want to hide this. So we want to put, push this in like this and you don't have to leave uh, G pressed. It's just to select the tool. It's the grab tool basically. And it looks like it fits now, right? Okay. Now we go back to object mode and we are going to go over here to where it says modifiers and we're going to add modifiers and go to generate and then mirror come to where it says mirror object and click on the eyedropper then click on the body and then take away the x and put z and it should mirror the other hand on the other side but it doesn't seem to be lining up with the other arm this actual model is probably not mirrored perfectly however we'll fix it to make it work so once we have that we are just going to fix this collar thing right here and then we are going to be done so select the body again we're going to go to scope mode we're going to use the grab tool again and then you can resize the grab tool by pressing f and then you move right to make it bigger and left to make it smaller but just be aware that the bigger you make it the more it's going to affect other parts of the body too so you don't want to overdo it with the size. So like here, I want to make sure that it's sticking up. It's definitely not pushing in. Yeah. So now I'm going to pull this down a little bit so that the sleeve stays outside of the hand as much as possible. There is a trick to get these edges to look straight. So let me do that right now. So you can select the head and either press H or press Alt H to make it appear again, or you can press on this little eye to make it go away. So let's select the body. Let's go to edit and I want to make sure that I select all these top vertices. So we have three selecting modes here. We have vertex, we have edge and we have face. Let's go ahead and stick with edge. So I'm going to double click on this edge and it's going to select a big portion of it, but then I got to keep doing it. So I'm going to press shift and double click this edge right here and it's going to select some more and then this edge and then it did it all the way to here and then do it till it's all the way around like this. Now I'm just going to press S zero, then Z. And then it does it flat like this. So it looks a lot cleaner. It looks a lot better. So now we can bring back the head and now it looks way better. Now, if you try to export this as a FBX file and put it into Mixamo, you're going to run into an error. You're going to get this error because there's a bunch of materials on this model that we have to remove. It just doesn't like some of the stuff that's on here. So let's go into shading right up here. Let's kind of zoom in so we can see what's happening. When we select the part of the body, we're going to see like the nodes right here. That's going to be the nodes for that part of the body. So we're going to do the full body and we only want to keep the base color, not any of these other things. So let's go ahead and remove these. These keep the base color hands again, keep the base color and finally the head. So that should be it. Now, if we export it as a FBX file, there shouldn't be any issues. Let's go ahead and go into file. Let's go to export dot FBX. We're going to name this narrow tool main model. So where it says here path mode, I'm going to put copy and I'm going to select this little box right here that says embed textures and then we can export this. Now that we exported the model, we're going to bring it into Mixamo. So I'm going to go to upload character. I'm going to find the model and I'm going to bring it in here and it's going to load. All right. So my model is in here and now we're going to press next and then we're going to have all these little circles and we're going to move these circles to where it's describing right here. So right here, it's the chin move it here to the chin. All right. And we're going to put this where the wrists are, this where the elbows are at, this where the knees are at, and this in the groin area. It has a few options here, but we're going to select standard skeleton and press next. And now it's going to automatically rig this for us. All right. So now we have our character animating and then we're going to press next, next. Yeah. So we can pretty much animate him now. I wonder if they have the Naruto run here. I'm guessing they wouldn't call it Naruto run. They would probably call it something like Ninja run. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's funny. That's so cool. Um, yeah, let's go to in place so that he's not running out of the screen. I think that was pretty okay. Also, if you want to make this faster, you can uh, come here to overdrive and just speed, speed it up a little bit more. I think that's about the right speed. So I'm going to download it and I'm going to download it with the skin. I would actually save this and start a new project. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this and we're going to bring in the animation. I go into import FPX and we got run 
I'm going to press one so I can get the front view. So he's not facing the right direction. So I'm going to select his whole body and I'm going to press R90 and then Z. And now he's facing sideways, just like in the anime. If you come up all, all the way to the right, to this one on the right, you're going to see the render view. This is how it's going to look when you render it. We're going to go over lighting in a bit, but for now, let's just keep it like this. Let me just position it. And this is something that you learn in part one of this tutorial series that you press Control Alt Zero, and it's going to place the camera in your current view. Uh, we're going to come over here and we're going to make this into a one by one. So I'm going to make it 1080 by 1080, and then I'm going to move the camera a little bit. So the animation stops because if, if you select here, the armature is going to show you that it's just the run cycle once. But uh, how do we get it to loop? Uh, I'm going to show you right now. You want to come down here to where you see this little, I think it's like a clock. And then you come here to where it says nonlinear animation. Then you come here and you press this button right here that says push down action. Then it's going to create this rectangle right here. And this is your animation. So what we want to do is we want to come over here to the right. If you don't see this, just press N like this. And you're going to go to action clip and you're going to go to repeat and then you're going to repeat it as many times as you want. Now, when you play it back, it's going to keep looping. All right. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go back to timeline. Also, uh, let's play around with the lights. When you created a new project, you should already have a light. I don't know why I created another camera, but now I created two lights. Okay. Well, yeah. So the light is up here when you select light or you see this in your project, make sure to select the light and press G to move it. This is a point light. So meaning it kind of acts like a light bulb, wherever you put it, it's going to just illuminate whatever's around it. I'm going to put it somewhere right there while you're selecting the light. If you come down here, it's going to let you just control the, how strong the light is. And also if you want to change the color, you can change the color too, but I'm going to reduce it because it's really bright. So maybe like 100. So we got a light there and uh, let me create another light. I'm going to duplicate this by pressing shift D and selecting the light that's already there. It's just going to make a duplicate and uh, I can move this somewhere else. So I think I'm going to move this more like behind him right here. All right. So I think the only thing I want to do is just kind of play around a little bit with the camera. Again, I go over all this stuff in my part one of this series of the tutorials. As the camera is rotating, I do want him in the shot at least his head in the shot for the entire time. I just kind of go somewhere in between here and then I just move things around so that I can see his face. And then I think that should help. Yeah, there you go. All right, that's cool. I think I'll end it like around 140. So it's gonna be 140 frames. All right, I am done with this. Now I'm just going to export it and run it into Comfy UI and see what it's gonna look like. All right, so I just ran this video to Comfy UI, so we're gonna see the result right now. And if we come down here, this is what we're working with. This looks so cool. Oh, that's sick. I think overall it looks quite clean. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Hopefully this was helpful. I know there are other ways to make these generations come to life, like adding backgrounds and effects. So let me know in the comments if you want me to cover that in a future video. Thank you so much for watching. And like always, take care, God bless, and peace.